Hello everybody and welcome to this extra video channel. This is the first real edited video I think here on the extra channel. But today we are gonna be assembling the Wakushi Outworld and this will be all from a small uh, S2 Outworld all the way to the big Saturn large Outworld. All, all of Wakushi's products are built around the same premise and therefore this video should hopefully help you to build either Outworld from Wakushi. Today we are gonna be building the Saturn Large nest, but most of the parts we use in the Saturn Large will be the same for all of the other versions. And this will be a long walkthrough of pretty much every step of building such nests. So the first thing we're gonna do is quite simply just to get everything out on the floor or on the table. Hello and hello for from the future right here and I'm almost done building this Saturn which you will also be quite soon if you're building the Saturn. Now before you start building I would just recommend that you see this entire video once just to make sure you get all the small quirks that you need to do before you start building it and finding out you're doing something wrong. I'm trying to explain it as well as I can but I will still recommend you see it all the way through at least one time. So I actually haven't built a Saturn before, but what I do when I build all my normal Wakushi Outworld, as you can see in the background, I have built quite a few. But what I normally do is look through all of these different components or walls. As you can see, this right here is quite clearly the lid. And the reason all of this blue things is on is because it's protecting the plastic um, acrylic right here. So it's just protection and we will peel it off in a second. But what I normally do is I just click everything together just to see if everything makes sense. Like right here we have uh, the bottom, the floor, and right here as we're building the sides we have the two walls. So we have something like this and then we also have the lid and then we have the final two pieces. Which right here, this will be the front and this will be the um, back wall with the accessory things. Now, why do I say this? Well, this is quite clearly um, the front because there is only uh, holes all the way around the sides. And this is the back of the Saturn because we have these special holes right here for the Saturn, uh, for the test tubes. Now, what I normally do when I build these things is I start with just peeling out all of this plastic. So give me a second and I will peel all of this plastic uh, off. And if you're building this with me or building any other Wakushi nest, um, it's now time to peel off all the plastic. And I have now peeled off everything with these walls. As you can see, now they are clear as day. Now it's important to know that you can scratch them now, so don't put them in a dusty place or in a place filled with small stuff. It's nice to have a, a table without any small rocks or anything to scratch everything. Now, there's a lot of people who get, including myself, by the way, uh, there's a lot of people who get confused with seeing all of these bits and bobs. We have so many things in these bags. Um, you have also a QR code here to scan if you want some instructions. Um, but today I will be your instructions. Um, but we'll just take all of these off. Um, this is of course the lid. This will be the same for all of you. Now if you have a Saturn, you will also get these, which are the things you connect the test tubes to. Um, of course, if you don't have a Saturn, you won't have them. And we also have all of the small connectors. Um, so we have these connectors or these um, mounts, which is what you use to setting the walls together um, with everything. So these are the things you will use a lot. Now, there's two different versions. There's the one with just a hole in one side and a hole in the other side. And there's also another version that has three holes. Now, it's very important to sort these apart um, because if you use them wrong, you won't be able to build the um, the outworld. So if I were you and you haven't built one of these before, I would just sort out the ones with two holes with the ones with three holes. And there we go, it's all sorted. Now we don't have nearly as many of these corner pieces as we have with these normal pieces, but now it is time to build the outworld. Now it will be different from what outworld you are building, but I always start with the front. So for you, the front will be, if you are building a Saturn, um, these are the sides, the ones with the hole, these are the sides. So they will go on the sidelines. So it's not those who we are looking for. If you're building a Saturn, we are looking for the one without any holes, which is it is just very blank because we have the back panel, which has a lot more holes. So what you are looking for if you're building the Saturn is just the 
plain blank wall without anything special. If you are building a normal outworld such as the S1-4, to you will be looking for the one that has one hole because the outworld has one entry, meaning you'll be looking for a one that looks a bit like this. But as I'm building the Saturn, I won't be looking for this. Now what I always do is I simply, this is the front wall, but we're just gonna put it aside and we're gonna look at this right here. This is the floor and you have something to peel off at both sides, just so you know. But what I start by doing is simply taking the two, um, the one with two holes and just start connecting them around like this, all the way around. Now I'm not screwing here, I'm just showing. So you'll have to do it like this. Now if you're building a S1 and may also be S2, I can't remember for sure, uh, you won't even have these pieces because they are not meant for the smaller constructions. Um, so if you don't have these pieces with three, uh, with two holes, you, uh, you can just skip this part. But what I do is simply start by lining up and screwing all of these in place. And it's as simple taking the little back filled with screws and open it. Inside of this, you will get an Allen key, which is the one you use, and I can't open it, uh, which is the one you use to put this all together. Now, there's a lot of people asking um, why don't uh, Wakushi, why doesn't he send them built? And that's quite simply because it's more expensive and it may break on the way. And Wakushi, I think it was Wakushi who once said to me that, no, it wasn't Wakushi, I can't remember, oh, sign fell down. I can't remember who said it, but uh, I heard somebody saying once that it's the nice thing about building it yourself is you know what, how you have built it and you can um, change anything if you want to change it. Now I'm just gonna give you the instructions to how you build one of these. If I can get, I just cut my nails yesterday. That's a bit against me. But if we just get all of these away, you simply just put the screw through like this. So you have the screw through. It's a bit hard to show, uh, but yeah, the screw is through. <laughs> and then you take one with only two holes and then you just start putting it in place. Now the thing about acrylic is if you put a lot of pressure on it, it will crack. So what I do is I put it all the way in and once it starts to getting a little bit tight right here, now it's really hard to um, push around, I just turn it back a little bit because that way you don't have any pressure. It means that you can push this a little bit, but it's not bad because well the ants cannot escape, but it makes sure that there won't be any unnecessary force on the um, piece. So I can turn this around as I please if I want to turn the other way. Um, but it won't cause any uh, long-term damage with a lot of pressure being built up. Now that's one. I'm just gonna go around and building all the ones with only two holes now. So I'm just gonna put every single on, every single one on. Now what you need to make sure of when you're doing this is the little mount connector, the little white thing, it needs to be turned out towards the glass, uh, the acrylic. So not pointing inwards, but pointing outwards. And what I'll just do is put all of eight in my case, on this floor now. So a little bit later and now I have all the mounts on. Now as you can see I haven't taken the corner pieces because that's where we have this a little bit more special piece. But I'm actually gonna wait even longer with making it. So I hope you still have your frontal side right next to you. I have my front right here and I have a little bit of dirt on my table so that's why it's a little bit dirty. But what I do is I simply line it up. Now, some of these models, so, um, I think it's like the S3 perhaps, um, the sides are a little bit at different angles. So uh, one side is longer than the other side, hence why you need to, before you screw anything in place, just look at it and think, hmm, does these fit? Like right here in the front, we have two screws that match with two screws. And that means that it fits. So I will just put on the front panel now. And what I do is quite simply once more, I take it in my hand and it's a little bit more complicated um, with the sides, but it's quite simple still. So I just put a screw through, if I can make it go through the hole. And then it's just about putting it and screwing it in. Now, this is a little bit easier with the smaller versions, but once they grow a little bit bigger, it's a little bit harder to manage it. But there we go, quite simply just start screwing it in place. Now, again, all of this build is actually, um, personally, I'd say very simple. I've built quite a few of them now, and I, except for the first two I built, um, I find these builds very easy. Uh, I'm not gonna brag or anything. Uh, that's just my own opinion. So the reason I haven't put the uh, two side pieces in yet, uh, the um, 
yeah, the side pieces is because they can't be a little bit hard to explain how to put in. But by putting in the front, it should make a bit more sense when it comes to these side pieces. When I built it the first time, the side pieces what was what confused me the most because they are a little bit confusing. Again, once I tighten these, I let them go very tight and then I just loosen it a little bit uh, because that way there's not pressure on the construction. But now it is time to put in the side pieces. So if you have just a wall with two screws in the middle, we'll now use this side. And with this side piece, it is just about putting it and seeing if it matches. Uh, because we have this hole that is just asymmetrical and everything is a little bit asymmetrical. But if we line it up like this, you can see right here that this actually fits. I'm looking at the screen. So we have the hole that fits with the other hole. And that way you avoid as much confusion as possible. So what I then do is I simply screw in the corner piece. So I grab it again, put in the screw from the bottom and then I put in the little corner piece. And then it's just about screwing it in. And once you have made these two corner pieces, you're actually pretty much finished with the first side. I mean, you, you still need a few more, but uh, you're well underway, let's say it like that. And once the two corner pieces are in, I of course just put a screw from the front to go into the little connector. And with screwing that in, we are actually uh, pretty much done with the floor to the first wall. Again, if you're building a small art world, this will be a lot quicker. And if you're building a big one, this will be a lot slower. You can, of course, also use a machine to get these in, but just be careful that you don't over tighten them because that may ruin the 3D printing and ruining the little connector. Hence why I like using the Allen key you get with the um, kit or with the art world. Uh, but with these two screws in place, you are now ready to use uh, to build the side walls. And all of it from the future, I did also forget to say that if I were you and I started with the front right here, I would place in the nest entrance straight away. So I would put in the little um, 3D printing thing that goes in and the other thing that clicks together and they just screw on. And then you have the little piece that are just a tube. That is the one that goes out and the one with the little walkway almost, that is the one you point in towards the outworld. Um, but I would build the little nest entrance before we go on with the side panels. Um, but again, if you're thinking, why are, you, why are you starting with the front? Well, for an S1 to S3, it doesn't matter how you start. But if you're building an S4 or a Saturn, well, then it matters a little bit because the back wall the wall you will have over here is a bit more complicated and I like to finish off with the back wall. So there's a purpose to why we do this. The next thing we're going to do is simply to put in the two sides. Again, if you have the Saturn, this is where the entrance will be. And if you have a regular outworld, there won't be anything except just a wall. But you simply just put them here and you start screwing everything together. I will start with the floor on both of them and uh, I'll get back to you. Okay, so a little while later and now now have both sides locked in. Now I also put on these in the end. You may do that as well. Now everything right now doesn't sit together. Hence why we need to use a normal connector. These with only two holes to put the sides together. So these should fit quite nicely right here in the sides. And this is where oh, I have taken a wrong piece. You need the ones with only two holes. And then you just need to tighten those in place. Now, again, I, I want to say it's very important not to over tighten. I am, um, when I was at Ancon with Sid, I think it was Antimatters, don't quote me, sorry, Antimatters for exposing you, um, who had a problem with one of the um, one of the ports not lining up completely. And uh, I'm pretty sure that the reason for those not lining up was because he had over tightened the one side and that had led the acrylic to bend a little bit outwards or inwards. So what I normally do is I take this screw first, then I take this, then I take this and then I put this in. Um, just because I haven't put this, this in from the beginning, I have these three and I start with this, this, this and this. Because that way you can avoid the um, over tightening problem and the warping of the acrylic because if you do over tighten one you may see that the acrylic just warps a little bit now these are a little bit harder to get in uh, because they are these side pieces and um yeah they may be a little bit harder to get in i will also put on the piece in this side now 
this side because it will be easier uh, once we have the last wall to not go in here and to not sit like this. So I will also be placing these two sides now, but I'll just put the sides, the four sides on now. So I actually just had a little problem with building mine right here. And that's because I had over tightened the one screw and therefore I couldn't just adjust the other screw completely. Um, so I would probably actually recommend you to loosen it quite a lot when you're tightening it the first time, uh, especially with these corner pieces. So you get the first in, uh, just tight enough so it holds itself and then put the second in and then just tighten both of them. But don't over tighten because we don't want over tightening because that will cause unnecessary pressure on the acrylic. With both of these corners now in place, except for the top ones, I will now be placing the corner ones on the one where we don't have the last wall yet. And this is simply just because it is easier to make it before we get the last wall up. Um, so uh, we want to make this as easy for po as possible for us. I'm not sure if my way is the most easy way, um, but it's the way I've always used and it works quite, easy, quite well. Except um, I definitely shouldn't have cut my nails uh, yesterday because it's... Uh, that is my biggest um, opponent right now, is uh, my, my nails. So with the um, con corner connectors put on, we're now going to put on the top floor. So we have a few connectors up here. And again, we're going to wait till the back wall. That's going to be the last thing we place in, uh, just because it's easier um, to wait with putting it in. So I'm just going to start by putting in this corner connector. And now, all compared to if we look at the bottom, now everything will be turned upside down. So everything will be facing up instead. But we are simply just going to be doing the same thing over and over. Um, hopefully, if you are building it, you have started to get in, uh, getting the um, getting the how, how it's built. Uh, because it is basically the same you do over and over again. And again, if you're, even if you're building a S1 to S3 and you don't have anything on the back wall, it is just easier to wait with the back wall um, because you have a little bit more mobility um, with going in and putting in everything. Once, once you open the back, you may see some small of these blue things. Some of these small blue things that will be in. Uh, these are from the laser cutting machine and sometimes they don't pop out. So what I do is I very carefully just put the Allen key inside to push out this little, um, um, this little plastic bubble. So once you have put in the corner pieces, it is now time to add the last pieces that goes up towards the ceiling. So this is once again, these two, uh, two hole ones. And these just go in from the side and go to the top. And uh, yeah, then we are almost done guys. And with all of the pieces now connected, except for this last side, we now take this entire setup and put it aside. Now, if you don't have, if you have a S1 to S3 out, well, I would just take the side and just put it on. But since we are building a Saturn today, and if you are building a S4, you will have the pillar accessories. And I personally don't like having this put on and then you have to go in here and work. So instead I put it on before. So in this version, we have three holes in the bottom. We have three holes here and I can see I put it this way. And this way everything matches. So we have four holes in the bottom and we have three holes going up and we have three holes going up that way. So this will be the orientation we will need to build at. Now, again, we are building the Saturn here. So the Saturn has this connector right here. This is the test tube holder. And as you can see on the Saturn, let me just put this down. You have a hole in the bottom, meaning that is what we should, we are putting to go to the bottom like so. So if we are building the large Saturn like I have, I will now need four screws to screw this in place. Now, if you are building something like the pillar accessories, I will just put on screen what orientation you will need to put in the pillars. So again, the pillars have an up and down and you'll have to put it this way that I'm showing you right here on the picture. And again, if you are building something that'll have four screws straight, I wouldn't go for the top and then the middle and middle and bottom. I'd go for the top and then the bottom and then the two ones in the middle to make sure everything fits and also to make sure that everything won't um, bend out of place if you over tighten. Again, what I would recommend is you tighten and then you loose a little bit. I can't say it enough because it really makes everything a lot easier if you do it that way around. 
Okay, since I built the Saturn here, I've actually found out it's better to not tighten the Saturn accessories until you have them inside the outworld. So put all four screws or eight screws in, but don't tighten them just yet. Put the Saturn wall in and follow what I do. And once the final wall is in place, you can then tighten all the four or eight screws. And with the first Saturn accessory on, we'll then have the second accessory. And it's quite easy. If you put it the wrong way, you won't be able to slide in the test tubes. So you'll just have it facing towards the test tubes. And as far as I can see, then you can't put it in the wrong way. And then you just screw the four screws into that one. Now, once you have the other accessory put on, we can take the outwell from before and just place it in. As you can see, everything should fit very nicely. And the last step now is, of course, just to put the last panel screws inside. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten or so I need to put in. So what you do now is simply just put in these ten screws. And there we go. We have now built all. Oh, 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 I did this again. Sorry, Jazz. I've now built this entire thing except for the lid. Now, if you have done it correctly or if you have done just like me, you should now be without any more pieces. I only have screws remaining and of course these extra bits and bobs and, and of course the lid. But you shouldn't have any more of these white connectors now. What I would recommend now is if you have made it dirty and like I've done, uh, I would go in and clean it just now with um, some paper if you have put some, um, some debris inside or anything. But else... It's not going very well, is it? Um, but else, I would now put the lid on. So if you have all the pieces inside, you just put the lid on and you just tighten it. It's quite simple. You have been through it all. I have, what do I have? I have three, three and two. So I have, oh, that's something I can't handle. Eight to screw in. And what I would do right here is I would start with one side and I would go to the opposite side. Now, I didn't screw this all the way down. But this is again to make sure that we don't warp it or bend it or do anything um, to make it harder for ourselves. So I'll just put all of the screws just a little bit in like this. And because we want to make sure that we hit all of the connectors. Once you have the four corner pieces, like I do now, I would then start tightening the different pieces that you haven't tightened yet. Before we go to the last middle pieces. And again, if you're building the small ones, you of course won't have the middle pieces. You will only have the corner pieces but again i would always do this uh, to go from one side and to the opposite side uh, just to make sure we don't do any damage now some of these screws they may be a little bit very high very hard so tight and some of them may be quite loose to be honest i don't know why but i have never um, experienced any problems with this except some of them don't feel like they are too safe um, but as far as I've experienced, they are safe, even though they feel a little bit loose sometimes. Uh, and that is because we have so many extras supporting it. Now, I would also uh, recommend you, if you are building this and if you're getting confused, um, you can contact me. But I would definitely recommend you contact Mr. Sid because he has the most experience. Now, I just put the lid on this outworld, but there is actually an orientation you can choose. I don't have a preference with what orientation you do, but the big lid actually has a back and forward. It doesn't have a, a written back and forward, um, but you have the opportunity to give you extra space in the back or extra space in the front. I've chosen the front um, because to me it doesn't matter too much. But we're almost done with the final few screws. And there we go. I now only lead, need to make the lid. Um, the final lid piece right here and I hope you are with me so far. We have the lid right here. Now before we go into that I would recommend that you look through the entire setup now and just make sure everything is tightened. Again not too tightened but a little bit tightened because I actually once made an entire setup and moved my colony into it and a few days they, later they escaped because I had somehow forgotten to tighten a screw. So as, as I hadn't tightened the screw there was a gap and then, and then the ants just started to escape, so that wasn't too fun. Now again, with the lid, because we have quite a few different pieces and screws, uh, I would recommend to put all of the screws in just a little bit before we tighten and tighten all of them in the end instead. And I now have all of the screws in place, and I will just tighten them now, because 
if we had tightened them from the beginning, some of them may have been hard, harder to get into place. So I tighten it and then I loosen it just a little bit. So for those who have built the S1 to uh, S4, if you have built an S5, congratulations, they are not out at the current time of recording. But if you have built the S1 to S4, you are now done. Uh, because we have the Saturn right here, we still need to click in the test tubes. But that has been it for this video for all of those who have built it. You've now built your outworld and congratulations, I hope you are happy with it. i am actually been very impressed with all of these outworlds, hence why I'm using them to pretty much house all of my ants. And now I can now put the outworld in place. Now if you have a Saturn and you don't want your colony to escape through these entrances, you can just block them off. But it is now time to put in the test tubes. So you get some test tubes with the Saturns. Now these test tubes just click in from the front. You click them in the front and then you slide them in. And in the end they give a little bit of a little... I really not... Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm really just um, pushing everything around right here. Uh, but these tubes simply go in the front and you slide them in from the back. Now it would be a bit easier to do this if I weren't doing it like this because I want you to see it. And there we go, we have now built a Wakushi Saturn Outworld nest. And hopefully you have built your nest as well. Or if you're just watching it through the first time, it's now time to build it. And I want to say good luck. I hope you have enjoyed this video. These are some accessories you get with the Saturn and I've never tried them, but I'm guessing they just go on. Uh, they just go on and that way you can grab the test tube a bit easier. Uh, let's say you want to change out the middle test tube. You use this little tool to go in and grab the middle test tube and then you can slide it out. So that way, if you are changing the middle tube, it's a bit easier than taking out all the tubes and disturbing the entire colony. You simply just go in, grab it and take it out. Now, it's the first time I've built the satin. And I must say, just like with the other Wakushi accessories and outworlds, I was actually very impressed for how simple it was. Now that I know the basics of how you build it. But that has been for this little construction tutorial of the Wakushi outworlds. I hope you've enjoyed. I've had loads of fun. Uh, it's taken we around one hour in total, yeah, one, one hour in total um, by building this entire thing and talking with you. If you are building a S1, it should take around half an hour. S2, also half an hour. It's not before we get up to these S4 satin sizes. Uh, it takes around one hour. Um, if you do it faster or slower, good on you, or I won't. I, I wouldn't think about it too much. Um, but that has been my time at least, around one hour for the Wakushi Saturn Large Outworld. That's been it for this video. Don't forget to subscribe also to my main channel uh, and Holifer because this is of course the extra channel. That has been it for this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll see you all in another video. Bye!